Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in the past couple of lectures of EC3400 Analog Electronics, we've looked at differential amplifiers created using bipolar junction transistors. In this lecture, we're going to explore such circuits using the idea of differential and common mode inputs. This lecture is going to assume that you've seen these previous lectures, so at least make sure you've seen this lecture on differential amplifiers with non-ideal tail currents first, or this isn't going to make any sense. So this is the differential amplifier circuit we've been looking at. We have two inputs. We have VI1 and VI2. These are small signal inputs. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically write these inputs in a new basis. I'm going to define a differential mode input that's VI1 minus VI2 and a common mode input that's VI1 plus VI2 divided by 2. And what we can do is we can basically say that our VI1 and VI2, whatever those are, can be written with a little bit of algebra as a sum or a difference of the common mode along with half of the differential mode input. So if I understand what the circuit does to differential mode inputs, and I understand what it does to common mode inputs, I could write down what the outputs are for any particular input. And by breaking it up in this particular form, we can get a lot of insight into how the circuit works. So in the previous lectures, instead of tackling the circuit by going directly to the small signal collector currents, we first focused on the small signal emitter currents. We replaced the upper part of the circuit with the Thevenin equivalent seen looking into the emitters. Recall that RIE, the Thevenin equivalent resistance seen looking into the emitter, is given by these expressions, where RTB is the Thevenin equivalent resistance seen looking out of the base, which here is given by RB. That gave us a circuit that looked like this. So, Let's look at the differential mode first. So let's set VI1 equal to VID divided by 2 and VI2 equal to VID divided by 2 with a minus in front. So if I compute VI minus V2, that gives us VID. So after making those substitutions for our inputs, let's think about what is the voltage at this node VA. Let's use a superposition argument. Let me first zero out the source on the right. If I think about this VID over two source, that's going to give me some voltage at VA. But because of the symmetry of the circuit, if I think about zeroing out this source and looking at the source on the right, well, I'm going to get the same voltage just with a negative sign. And when I add those two voltages from those two computations together, whatever they are, that's going to wind up canceling those voltages out. So that's going to give me VA equals zero, which means that this is ground. So I can compute IE1 with just Ohm's law. I have the voltage VID divided by 2, and I divide that by the series resistance going to that ground. Going back to the original small signal circuit, let's replace the stuff on the bottom here with the Norton equivalent circuits seen looking into the collectors. We can write something like this. And one thing we have to be careful with here is to remember that it's not the case that IC1, the current you see here, is equal to alpha IE1. This isn't true. In the Norton and Thevenin equivalent circuits that Marshall Leach created that we're basing this course on, alpha IE1 is equal to this IC1 with the SEN parentheses, and that's this current source here. So that can be confusing, so I always like to emphasize it. So to review from the previous lecture, we take this alpha IE1 and substitute it in here for IC1SC, which gives us this. And then we can take the IE1 we computed previously, substitute that in, which gives us this expression here. Now, in the last lecture, I didn't explicitly define a gain that we usually call capital A. Here, let me define AD, our differential mode gain, using this formula here. So we can write our input-output relation according to that differential mode gain for differential mode inputs. Recall that our differential mode input is given by V1 minus V2. 
And by the symmetry of the circuit, where there is a negative on one side, VO2 is just minus VO1. So the VO2 output is the same thing as the VO1 output with just the roles of VI1 and VI2 swapped. So now let's talk about common mode inputs. For this analysis, I've rewritten the resistor RQ in the tail as two parallel resistances, each of resistance to RQ. So let's set the inputs to be the same voltage, VICM. So making that substitution, let's think about what the current flowing through this branch here is. Let's once again apply superposition. If I were to short out the source on the right to focus on the effect of the source on the left, I would see that there would be a current induced flowing this way. Now, if I were to short out the source on the left to focus on the fact of the source on the right, I see I would get a current of the same magnitude flowing this way. And those two currents would wind up canceling each other out in the superposition. So IA here is actually equal to zero. There's no current flowing through here. That means that IE1 flows all the way down here through to RQ. So I can write the current IE1 using Ohm's law as just our voltage divided by the series resistance of RIE, RE, and 2RQ. So now if I substitute that formula for IE1 into our formula for the output voltage, we wind up with this expression here. And now I can define a common mode gain here called ACM according to this expression here. And now I can write the output VO1 as our common mode gain times our common mode input. Now rewriting these expressions on the next slide, remember that our common mode gain is just the average of the inputs VI1 and VI2. And because of the symmetry, VO2 is the same as VO1. Notice that if we want to talk about the case where we don't have our Q, if we let RQ go to infinity, the common mode gain goes to zero, which is the ideal case for a differential amplifier. So the magnitude of the differential gain divided by the common mode gain of a differential amplifier is a generic figure of merit called the common mode rejection ratio. In the particular case of the BJT-based differential pair we have here, if we substitute in the expressions we derived, cancel these things here, and then rearrange the expression a bit, we wind up with something that looks like this. And then I notice there's this RIE plus RE in the numerator and the denominator. So I can rewrite it like this. Ideally, the common mode rejection ratio is infinite, which is something we get if we let RQ go to infinity. Usually the CMRR is expressed in decibels. So you would take this quantity here and take the base 10 logarithm and multiply it by 20 to get it into decibels. For instance, the 741 op amp data sheet lists a common mode rejection ratio of 95 as being typical and 80 as being a minimum. The TLO72 data sheet lists common mode rejection ratios under different operating conditions, but in both operating conditions, it lists a typical CMRR of 105 decibels. The AD620 by Analog Devices isn't an op amp. It's called an instrumentation amplifier. And it's an amplifier that has differential inputs where you set the gain with a choice of resistor. Now, if we take a look at the CMRR, we see that for one of the models, the AD620B, it offers at least 100 decibels of CMRR for a gain of 10, with 110 being typical. And at higher gains, you can get, say, 120 dB minimal with 130 being typical.